part four of our 10 freezer meals. This is the pork meal. So we're going to get started making a pork roast with potatoes and carrots. I buy a whole pork loin to do this with. I'm crooked. I gotta fix that. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me. Just fixing something that should have been fixed before I started. There you go. <laughs> I buy a whole pork loin and then I split it into a one pound piece. It's a little over a pound for anyone who wants four servings. And then I have a little over one and a half pound pieces for those orders that are for six servings. And then I have some left over. Sometimes I have another recipe to use that for. Sometimes I don't and I cut it. I always start at the white end of the pork loin and give that to my customers. And then when I get down to the dark end, if I don't have anything to do with that, I will just cut it up really thin and use it for breakfast pork chops. And that's what we like. We raise our own pork, but you know, if I have it from the grocery store, it's not like I'm gonna throw it out. Okay, so next we have some pork roast seasoning. I've never used a pork roast seasoning. I always just use golden mushroom soup. And um, that is delicious. That's how my grandmother did it. But I need one and a half for the large ones. And so usually that will be two tablespoons, but this one has a little less than I'm normally used to. So one and a half tablespoons out of there for each one, and then one more packet each for each one. Smells really good. Lots of uh, peppery goodness in there. Even smell like a little bit of cumin and maybe a little bit of oregano. Onion powder, garlic powder, smells yummy. And then just one for the one pound portion. All right, that'll get right on the meat. And when they add water the day of cooking, that will all cook up very nicely. I would add an onion mushroom soup mix packet because I have them left, but I'm afraid because these recipes are calibrated already that that's going to make it too salty. So I'm not going to do that even though I would like to. Now each of the six serving bags get two thirds a pack of these carrots. Well, that's a lot of carrots. I hope y'all like carrots. And then we'll put the last of the bags, do about two thirds in each of these bags. And then that leaves maybe a fourth or three fourths, and then that leaves a half a bag in total for my half bag. Although those look about the same, so I'm gonna take some out of here. I guess I could have measured them, but I didn't want to bother with that. And then this recipe calls for canned potatoes. I'm not really a fan of canned potatoes, but because this is going in the freezer, this is the best option. They've been parboiled while they were in their cans, and so they'll be less likely to become mealy. And we're going to add... Just a cup at a time. If I had been able to get the correct can sizes, I would know exactly what to add. But I don't know about your grocery stores. Mine, hear my squeaky front door. My grocery stores are having a hard time even providing the correct substitutions that I need. I mean, 
Italian turkey is not a substitute for regular turkey. And hot chilies is not a substitute for regular chilies. We need a foodie up in there trying to tell them what is what. So there we go for that. All done. Pot roast with carrots and potatoes. Oh, once again, I have forgotten to write my directions on the bag, but we won't keep you for that. There is number one recipe for the pork. Number two is coming up featuring my homegrown pork chops. They're delicious. Okay, lastly, we are going to do a sweet and sour pork chop. Walmart did not have my sweet and sour seasoning and I neglected, well, actually what happened was they have sweet and sour seasoning and sweet and sour sauce. But I chose something that I thought was a sauce packet for sweet and sour chicken. And instead, I got three little boxes of sweet and sour chicken, like that you would warm up to eat for lunch. So I'm going to have to look up a recipe right quick. And this is really why I saved this one for last. Um, I'm just going to make my own sweet and sour sauce right quick. So... I can, um, let's see, sweet and sour sauce to buy. No, I want a sweet and sour sauce recipe so that I can put this in here. I'm going to go to all recipes. All recipes, their recipes have been tried. I never have a problem with their recipes. And I can always um, count on them to have the correct measurements. They haven't left anything out. They're not just some blogger trying to get something down for the week. And it may or may not work. So if all recipes or food.com has a recipe, um, I will go with that. So let me grab these ingredients. White sugar, water, white vinegar, soy sauce, cornstarch, and ketchup. Okay, some of those things I had to have anyway. So I know I've got them. Let's grab those right quick. I had to take a little break. My battery on the phone is low and my battery is low. So before I plug it in, I'll show you what I'm making for lunch. Had a little leftover chicken, a little leftover steak, or stew meat actually. Put in some peppers and onions. I'm just gonna make some rice and put some of that pork roast seasoning on it. Maybe make a little gravy. And that's what we're going to have for lunch. Now let me go plug this phone in before it dies. Okay, I have been at this for three and a half hours. Calculated up to my break. And I am getting a little tired. I'm going to double this recipe for sweet and sour sauce. So there's three and a quarter cups. And there's three and a quarter cups. Didn't feel like doing the math, although I know it is one and a half cups. Get all of that out of there. Two thirds cup of water, which will be one and one third cup of water. Just use the water right out of the tap. How about that? One and one third cup of water, a third a cup of vinegar, which please, 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 even if you eyeball everything else, always measure your acid because if you get too much acid, your recipe is ruined. A quarter cup of soy sauce, so that'll be a half a cup. I have liquid aminos. Thankfully, because I either forgot to order soy sauce or they didn't put it into my cart. So I'll have to check on that. Two tablespoons 
of cornstarch, the wonder element that makes it thick, and oh wait, I'll have to put four tablespoons because I'm doubling it. And do you see the ketchup anywhere? but I must have put it back after I ate my lunch. Two tablespoons of ketchup. I guess that's to give it its traditional red color. Maybe some tomato richness also. And then a whisk. Yes, I will hand you a plate. We're all in here trying to eat lunch and we're trying to be silent about it because I'm making a video. <laughs> oh well. It's okay. These people have families too. Alright. That did not give it a traditional red color. But no matter. We're going to roll with it anyway. Now it says to cook this on the stove until it gets nice and thick. Of course, that's to let the sugar melt. So, we'll do that, and we'll be back. Okie doke, let's put this last meal together. Let me grab the sweet and sour sauce out of the microwave. There goes one beauty with her iced coffee. Maybe you gotta look at her. She's the bride to be. Bye, baby. Bye. All right. Got my homemade sweet and sour sauce. Not quite as thick as I would like, but after it cooks in that crock pot for four to six hours, it will be all it needs to be. Okay, for these, we gotta have the pineapple. The sweet and sour, let's see, where are those veggies? Here they are. I knew I brought them. Asian veggies. And then I have my homemade sweet and sour sauce so I can skip the rest of those instructions. I have one small, which I should have done in a small bag. Let me rectify that situation right quick. If you put a small order in a large bag, it looks like you're giving people nothing. So, I'll write small, I'll write sweet and sour pork chops with vegetables. And then, before I forget, I have to put the instructions on every bag because it is really a booger to try to do it after. Okay, just like everything else, low four to six hours or high three to four hours. Now I was able to cut two boneless chops out of the rest of that pork loin and then for the others I'm using my pork chops, a decision that I am regretting because these pork chops really need to be a premium item. They're um, just, they're frozen, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. They're just gorgeous. Three quarter inch thick, as big as a small T-bone steak. These are from a very large pig, Julia. If you keep up with me at all, you know our Queen Julia around here. But we are in a season of our life where we can A, not have time at all to do what we need to with animals, B, not have energy at all to do what we need to with animals, especially 
keeping up fences and keeping up automatic feeders, moving electric fences, moving animals, and see the cost of food, animal food, has tripled over the last year and a half. And the quality also seems to be going way down. I used to be able to grow out a pig in six months. Now it takes me eight months. Not to mention the fact that if you don't reserve your kill date months in advance, you have to keep your pigs even longer thus costing yourself more time and money. We're just in a season that none of that is possible. So we went ahead and processed our large mama pig and we will sell the meat and eat the meat and we'll be happy to have it because it is a premium product. You know, they don't even sell um, free range forest raised pork in any grocery store that I know of and so we've just got the best of everything going on here with that delicious pork. I'm going to put a cup and a half in the larges and three quarter cups in the small Let's see if I can get another half cup for each of the larges. That equals about what the recipe called for with the sauce packet and the other ads. So I'm going to do a cup and a half and then I have just a little more, about a quarter cup. Mm, I don't think that the small one needs it, so I'm going to split that between the two halves because those pork chops are so big. I kind of regret the decision to use my own pork chops. I, I think I may have already said that. But anyway, it's done now. There's nothing I can do about it. So let's get those up. I'm gonna go ahead and close that just for a minute because I'm not gonna deal with those quite yet. Let's just do this one. To that, we're going to add some pineapple, just a very little bit of pineapple, except for this is whole pineapple and it was supposed to be chunks. I tell you what, when I got my Walmart notification, I had 11 substitutions. And then this wasn't even on there as a substitution, but I guess whoever was picking my groceries just picked the wrong thing. It is very easily chopped. It's just in rings in this can. Just run your knife down and chop it against the side of the can. It's no big deal. I'll tell you what's about to be a big deal because I'm saving this pineapple juice is finding a glass. I don't know if anybody else out there has this problem, but my kids take the glasses. And so I quit buying glasses. I have a cup that I use. My husband has a cup that he uses. And they fend for themselves now. One time I said, if I don't have my glasses and bowls back in this kitchen by sundown, I'm taking everybody's doors off. But that's really not feasible. Um, bye, baby. Love you. I'll see you in a little bit. Everybody's coming and going today. Husband was home for lunch. He's heading out. I'm going to put a little bit less than half of this can of pineapple in here, and then I'll split it between the other two there. We have some seasoned Asian medley vegetables. I'll need a whole bag 
in each one, and then I'll put a half bag in the small and slip the rest between this. And I'll have everything done. You don't have to watch me do that. Look at this beautiful, sweet and sour pork chops with vegetables. You're gonna put that in the crock pot. And those pork chops are going to be primo amazing. They are very tender and just so flavorful. They don't come out of the package smelling off at all. They really don't have a smell to them at all, which is so nice. I hope that you have enjoyed this series. I really love freezer meals. They're a mainstay around here just because we're so busy and I'm not always available to start our supper. So if I have something that can be put in the crock pot, that's just a win-win because anybody can do that. And so thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for those wedding videos. There's my husband leaving in the van. See you later, baby. Hope your day is as good as mine. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.